In this video, we're going to be talking about immune hemolytic anemia. This is sometimes known as autoimmune hemolytic anemia. And basically, the name tells you a lot. It's immune mediated, so you know it has to have some part of the body's immune response. In this case, you can break this concept down into anemia from IgG or from IgM. And so basically what's happening is you have red blood cells that are breaking down because of IgG and IgM. Now before we go into more detail on IgG or IgM, we need to talk about the Coombs test. This is something that you should know for many of the board exams and it's kind of an intuitive concept. And so you have two different kinds of Coombs testing. You have the direct and the indirect. In the direct test, we're testing the patient's red blood cells. We're wondering if the patient's red blood cells already has an IgG that's attached to it. So that means the body has made an IgG, for example, for whatever reason. Maybe it's autoimmune. Maybe it's related to drugs. Uh, for whatever reason, the body's made an IgG, and it's binding to the red blood cell. And that's causing problems for these red blood cells. In the direct Coombs test, we can add a synthetic it might not actually be synthetic, it might come from like an animal or something, but you understand what I'm saying. It's a foreign anti-IgG that's added to the patient's red blood cells. Now it's not the patient's plasma, it's the patient's red blood cells. And that's important because the indirect uses plasma. And so if we find red blood cells that have these antibodies on them, they're going to react with our foreign anti-IgG and we're going to get some kind of agglutination. If we're talking about the indirect test, we are adding red blood cells that do not come from the patient and we're also adding anti-IgG, the same anti-synthetic IgG that we've added before. Now we're using the patient's plasma and in the plasma the patient has native IgGs and if they have IgGs that they have produced that have not yet attached to red blood cells, we can detect them in the plasma. And so direct is probably more high yield, but what you should know is it is checking directly on the RBC, and indirect is checking indirectly through the plasma. Now let's talk a little bit more about IgG. In IgG, what you're getting is a red blood cell, and then the IgG activates the macrophages in the spleen. And so the spleen recognizes that there's an IgG attached to the red blood cell, and it begins to eat away at the red blood cell. This is called extravascular hemolysis, although there is also some intravascular hemolysis that may occur with IgG. Another thing you should know about IgG is it binds RBCs in the regular warm body temperature, and we call that warm agglutination. And you're going to contrast that with IgM, which is going to be cold agglutination. Now, why do we even care about warm or cold agglutin? And the reason these terms are important is because temperature will help us identify whether something is IgG mediated or IgM mediated. If something only binds to the red blood cell in cold temperatures and we can test for that, then we can tell that it's more likely IgM instead of IgG. And so what happens is the splenic macrophages will recognize a red blood cell with an RBC and it'll start eating away and it'll cause spherocytes. Usually the shape of an RBC is something like this, but in spherocytosis, the splenic macrophages are eating away at the parts of the red blood cell that have IgG, and so the red blood cell loses some of its membrane, and it becomes more circular, or like a spherocyte. Now this kind of IgG immune hemolytic anemia can be caused from something like lupus, so it can be like autoimmune, where your body is producing an antibody that can attack its own red blood cells. It can be associated with chronic lymphocytic leukemia. It can be associated with drugs, where drugs bind to the red blood cell membrane, and then the body creates antibodies. It's trying to attack the drug, but at the same time, there's damage to the red blood cell. When you're considering treatments for this kind of issue, you want, if it's drug-related, you know, you got to consider the source. If it's drug-related, you stop the drugs. If it's immune-mediated, then you can give steroids. You can also use IVIG, and IVIG is kind of like a decoy for the spleen. So basically it distracts the spleen and it prevents it from attacking the body's red blood cells. So that's what IVIG does and that's kind of a high yield concept that they like to make sure you understand. Worst case scenario, if none of those things work, then you can always go to a splenectomy. Now a couple things to know about IgM 
is it has predominantly intravascular hemolysis. That just means that it's not breaking down in the spleen, it's breaking down in the actual blood vessels. And that's the majority of it. There is some that's going to be broken down by the spleen probably, but overwhelmingly it's going to be intravascular. Now the reason it's intravascular is because IgM tends to fix complement onto the RBC and activate the MAC complex. And the MAC complex actually pokes holes in the membrane and it can do it without the spleen. It can do it intravascularly and that's why you have intravascular hemolysis. So you can remember M MAC complex. IgM is also associated with mycoplasma, another M. IgM is also associated with mono. And so you can remember M for MAC complex, M for mycoplasma, and M for mono. And another thing about IgM, as opposed to the warm agglutination in IgG, IgM binds RBCs in the cold temperatures of the extremities. And so that's an important differentiation between IgM and IgG is that it's in the cold versus IgG, which is in the warm. And so that could be useful in diagnosing something like mycoplasma pneumo.